it is finally time where it is no longer a meme where we can actually punch with Marcus alongside with Shine Greymon. Digimon fans, welcome back and today we'll be showcasing the Marcus and Shine Greymon deck profile. There is a ton of synergy between the new Marcus Damon Tamer alongside with Shine Greymon where we can actually use Marcus Damon to attack our opponents, mainly at the security for the time being. The idea is to set up a bunch of red and yellow tamers to help us gain lots of different advantages on the board, especially with minusing DP effects and minusing DP to our opponent's security Digimon too. Marcus now also lets us digivolve very quickly into our stack to pull off some really cool combos and I just can't wait to show you guys later too. But like always, let's get into the deck profile and show you guys what we have today first. Okay, so let's begin with our Digi cards. First, we play the four copies of the BT5 Coromon. This is once per turn when attacking if this Digimon has Greymon in its name, you get to draw one card, which draw power is going to come in handy. Very important for this particular deck. As per usual, draw power equals more pieces to your hand. Grabbing more pieces means more combos, more plays, and more accessibility to cards to give you more options when you're playing throughout the game. And four copies is really all you need. Let's now begin with our rookies. First, we have four copies of the brand new BT12 Agumon, which one specifically digivolves for zero on top of a Coromon, meaning it's just trying to restrict yourself into the ar archetype itself, because otherwise you digivolve for one on top of a yellow or any other red egg, which is why it's very important to play a Coromon as your digi egg mainly, and it has an on play effect. Revealing top four cards of your deck, adding yourself one Digimon card with Greymon in its name and one Marker's Daemon among them, and then you place the rest back to the bottom of your deck, which is going to be super crucial. Your main searcher of the deck, finding you the core pieces that you need to build your combos, build your plays, build your stack, and whatever. Also, its inheritable effect is that your turn once a turn, when one of your yellow or red tamers becomes suspended, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 2000 DP for the turn, and you can rack up a lot of DP reduction effects, which is going to be really helpful for sure in some situations when you're trying to control the board. Next, we play four copies of the starter deck 7 Agumon right here from the Gallimon starter deck, which basically gives you the inheritable of when attacking, not once per turn, when this Digimon attacks a player, gets extra 2000 DP for the turn. This is going to be super crucial, mainly because we play for this Agumon for being dinosaur. Keep in mind, guys, all the Agumons that we're going to be showcasing are all going to be dinosaur related because it's going to be super important when you get into your other level fours and whatnot and so on basically so this is definitely nice to have and mainly as you guys can already see i'm playing a red base which also makes sense that we're playing four copies of agu x right here digivolving for zero on top of agumon otherwise you can digivolve on top of any red egg for zero as well on play or when digivolving it searches you top three cards of your deck once again adding yourself a greymon or omnimon and a X antibody option in the deck as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and jump ahead and tell you guys that we don't play the X antibody option in this deck. It doesn't really utilize it. It doesn't really need it either. So that's why we still mainly play the Agumon X antibody just for searching purposes. Just to grab yourself a Greymon, which is still really, really crucial for the deck. Did you guys know that Shine Greymon and Marcus is still nowhere near at their full power just yet? With EX4 and BT13 coming very soon, this deck is going to get even stronger than ever. So if you guys are just as excited and want to see me cover more Shine Greymon and Marcus videos and deck profiles on the channel, then be sure to hit that subscribe button right now. Turn on that notification bell so that you will know as soon as those videos come. Also give this video a like while you're at it because it really helps and I greatly appreciate the support. Another thing is that I actually posted this deck list on the Evolve Club membership already. So if you guys want to see early draft content by me and early deck profiles, be sure to join the membership right now by clicking on the join button. I will also leave links with the iCard on the top right and in the description box down below. That's it for all of our rookies. Let's talk about our level fours. First and foremost, let's talk about the brand new Geo Greymon. And you guys are going to understand exactly why we play dinosaur type Agumons. First, it digivolves for 3 on top of a level 3 that is red or yellow, but you can digivolve for 2 on top of a level 3 Agumon in its name and has the dinosaur traits. Meaning that all the 3 different Agumons I showcased already so far, they all have dinosaur specifically, which is why, so that you can get into this guy. Why is this guy so important? It's because when digivolving, if you don't have Marcus Damon in play, you get to play one from your hand for free. Marcus Damon, as we all know, is a fairly expensive tamer, which does cost 4 all of them. 
and you do want to be playing them for free as much as you can with this particular effect. So really great early game starter, really great early game combo, and it has the Inheritable, which is exactly the same as the brand new BT-12 Agumon, specifically for the Shine Greymon archetype, is that your turn once return when one of your yellow or red tamer becomes suspended, you get to minus 2k to one of your opponent's Digimon as well. And you definitely want to maximize that for this one because it lets you play that Marcus for free. Next, we really need to stick to Geo Greymons and as many as we can. So I play another four copies of this particular one, which is red, because mainly all of our level threes and our rookies are going to be red. So we can easily digivolve it. But also it has a very nice security effect because after battle, it gets to pop out of it. And on play, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 4,000 DP or less, which is very handy in getting removal of any smaller rookies and any smaller Digimon that your opponent normally has. And it comes in handy because I will show you guys a little bit of some creative combos you can get with this guy because his extra level 4 free body on the board, it really gives you that extra swing, extra push, and you can really just climb up from there afterwards as well on top of your Digivolution line if you ever want to Digivolve that way too is very, very nice. That's why I maximize that 4 because it does come out in security quite often. Then to round it all off, I like to play two Kazemons for now. I didn't mention that we want to maximize as much Geo Greymons as well, but for our playtesting, I realized Kazemon is also just as good because you get just good of hybrid for game. You get often enough, you have enough memory to sort of let yourself uh, make more of these plays. And we do have quite a handful of yellow tamers, which helps us give that extra swing. So when we do make that extra swing, we can actually steal games very easily with this card. So that's definitely my recommendation right there. Next up. Let's move into our level fives and let's talk about this brand new Rise Greymon right here, which is super good for the deck. And I really, really like this brand new one. First, you Digivolve on top of level four that is yellow or red for four costs, but mainly you want to be Digivolving it for three on top of a Geo Greymon specifically. And once again, that's why we want to try to maximize on as much Geo Greymons as we can. Now, when Digivolving, if you have a yellow or red tamer in play, you get to gain one memory back, effectively even making this a two cost, which is very memory efficient and really good. All turns once a turn, when one of your tamers is deleted, you get to place one Marcus Daemon from your trash on top of your security stack face down. And this is going to enable you a lot with your Marcus Daemon plays, especially when you use your Marcus Daemon to attack as well, which we'll talk about more later detailed in the combo segment, but just a really crucial effect. And it's inheritable is essentially the exact same effect as its secondary effect, which basically, you know, when one of your tamers is deleted, you also get to place one Marcus Daemon from your trash back to the top. So really, really good effect, really important for the deck as well. And you definitely want to maximize out of four of. And a really cool thing is both yellow and red, which definitely gives you a lot of color versatility. And then next, I still like to play two copies of this older Rise Greymon from BT2, because when Digivolving, you get to play one yellow tamer from your hand for free but you don't get to use any on-play effects. None of our yellow tamers really have on-play effects anyways in this particular deck, so it gives you quite a lot of value, but also with the inheritable, while you have three or more yellow tamers in play, this Digimon gains security plus one. We do, again, play quite a handful of tamers in this deck, so it's very easy for us to reach this threshold, but I mainly like to play it because we can play tamers for free, and um, some of you guys might just want to play one of instead. Totally up to you guys, because it may conflict in some situations, but I'll explain a little bit more as we go along because then we also have two copies of Rise Grey X. If you guys want to lower the amount of that previous Rise Grey Mon, which I just showed you guys, you can bump up the count on this particular one. It digivolves for four on top of any regular level four, yellow or red, but it digivolves for one specifically on top of a Rise Grey Mon. When digivolving, you get to play one yellow or red tamer from your hand for free, which is almost equivalent to it, but you just have to pay a little bit more. And if you have Rise Greymon or X Antibody underneath this guy's sources afterwards, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 2000 DP for each yellow and red tamer you have in play. So really, really great for removal. Uh, so I'm just trying to juggle between two and two right now for the balance at the moment, but you guys can definitely play a three of, which I also highly recommend uh, based on your own personal preference. Also, it has a your turn effect, which is it's sort of for each tamer you have in play, this Digimon gains extra 1000 DP. So really good, kind of like a pretty cool mini boss Digimon on the deck and super crucial to the deck, of course because of being able to play tamers for free is always nice. That's it for all of our level fives. Let's talk about our level sixes where we first and foremost got the brand new Shine Greymon right here. Digivolving for four costs on top of a level five that is yellow or red. However, you Digivolve for three on top of a Rise Greymon in its name. So you can go on top of X as well, which is absolutely fantastic. When Digivolving for each yellow and or red tamer you have in play, one of your opponent's Digimon and all of your opponent's Digi security Digimon gets minus 3000 DP for the turn. So the more you rack up, the more you can really just, you know, minusing their security, minusing something on board. You can delete one big thing, which is absolutely great. 
and it also has a your turn secondary effect all of your Marcus Damon in this place gains extra 3000 DP and security plus one. So it makes your Marcus Damon super explosive and in basically enhances and increases the chance of your Marcus to survive when it makes the swing, basically. So really, really good card, really powerful. You can play three or four really based on what you have. But I do have some spicy text I want to show you guys as well as we move on and talk about other than this main boss, Digimon. I still like to play one copy of the Older Shine Grade, just a really good whiteboard removal. You can be very flexible with its Wendage Evolving effect, but you do have to suspend all of your yellow tamers. And for each tamer you suspend, you get to use the one following effect, basically, you know, modify one of your opponent's uh, Digimon DP by minusing it 4,000 for each tamer you have one at a time. So you can sort of like be very flexible. You can remove multiple things. You can remove one big thing, or you can do both at the same time. So just a really nice general removal card and control card that you need when you need to go for it. And then one other spicy tech I'd like to bring back right here. You guys don't have to play this one necessarily. You guys can just increase the uh, any of the other Shine Grays counts by one if you want to instead. But this one is when attacking once a turn for the War Greymon, letting you add the top card of your security stack and you can unsuspend it. You can minus 6,000 DP to something. Only three costs to basically Digivolve makes it very efficient. And you can just do really cool, crazy combos with this guy to swing multiple checks sometimes if you want to go for that play. Or you can swing over big stuff very easily with this guy too. So I still really like this card generally. So I think it's a really nice spicy tech to have in the deck. But that's it for the level sixes. And to round off, with all of our Digimon, we have one Blitz Omni, just the pressure for game, and sometimes you just really need it for that extra swing. You do basically quite a lot of damage in this deck, and having that Blitz Omni does help you end games, which is always fantastic. So basically, that's it for all of our Digimon. Now let's talk about our Tamers. With our brand new Tamer, you have to play four copies of this brand new Marcus right here, and it's super interesting. All of you guys have been memeing, and we've been memeing in the community about Marcus Punch for Game, this is the Marcus that punches for game. Now, for four costs, it is a dual color tamer. At the start of your main phase, if you have a Digimon with Agumon or Greymon in play, you get to pay one memory for the turn, and this tamer is basically treated as a 3000 DP Digimon, but you can't digivolve it. By doing so, it basically lets you attack with this tamer. So it's very similar to kind of like a hybrid thing, but instead of paying two memory to go into hybrid, you're just paying one to move this guy up, and he's a 3k rookie right there, and you get to punch your opponent right into security, which is really what it's there for. He has a secondary effect. When this tamer becomes suspended, one of your Digimon may digivolve into a yellow card with Greymon in its name from your hand without paying memory costs. Really crucial, you can digivolve into a Greymon. So you can really just turbo into your level four, meaning your Geo Greymon, you can turbo into Ryan, Greymon and you can turbo into any of your level sixes meaning mainly it can be shine Greymon or even your war Greymon which is absolutely insane and really good he helps you climb up the digivolution stack very very quickly with your combo and basically yeah you can pull off like really crazy stuff with this guy and I'll show can't wait to show you guys how cool it really is but four is definitely must of you want to see it as often as you can because funny enough Marcus Damon is actually your main hitter of the deck so that's it for Marcus Damon, but we still have another Marcus Damon. We played three copies of this older one. We just like to bump up more Marcus Damon counts just for like efficiency in terms of searching, but this one's still just as good because it is your memory tamer. Also with his main secondary effect is that your turn when one of your Digimon of Greymon in its name attacks, you get to suspend him to gain a memory back. So pretty nice, very, very good for the deck for sure. And memory tamer is very important. And yeah, being able to gain that extra memory just helps the deck so much as well to make help you make more plays and whatnot. Then we have two copies of the Taikari. I've been debating sometimes of bumping this up to three, and I might take away one Marcus Damon. Uh, that's the memory tamer for it, but really up to you guys to juggle between ratios. I only felt like I wanted really want more memory when it comes to having the memory setter and having the Marcus Damon name for efficiency. Uh, but the only downside with the Marcus Damon is that it's only pure red. It would be really nice if it was also yellow, but it's not. Well, anyways, but with Tai and Kari, you know, you do go long, low on security with three or less. Your opponent's going to go low as well, especially if you can pull off the Marcus Damon combo to swing for double checks too as well with it. And putting it, your opponent down to three and having yourself down to three is very easy. So you can gain a lot of memory with these guys. But also with their secondary effect has a lot of synergy, uh, which really helps out your Marcus Damon. Because when one of your red or yellow Digimon attacks, you can suspend these guys to minus 2k to your opponent's security Digimon. And your Marcus Damon will count for it as well. So it's going to help out very nicely, ensuring your Marcus Damon survives the security battles through. So yeah, a two of is definitely really good for the deck. And then last but not least, there's still more Tamers. I like to play two Cody's 
just because, you know, we do play a lot of yellow Digimon, start your main, you get to gain one memory with it, but also helps us sort of, you know, set up more tamers and having more yellow tamers. We can also go for the hybrid for game strategy, which is always going to be nice. Also, your turn when one of your Digimon with two or more colors attacks, which a lot of our top end is anyways, including Marcus Damon himself as well. Suspending him to minus 2k to something of our opponent's Digimon is super nice, 100%. So two Cody's definitely really nice too. That's it for Tamers, let's talk about our options. Two copies of Shining Blast, which is one of the new signature moves of Shine Greymon. Really cool card because it lets you play one Marcus Damon from your hand without paying its memory cost. And then for each yellow and or tamer, red tamer that you have in play, three of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 2,000 DP for the turn. So the more tamers you have, the more you can minus stuff and you can really easily deal with white boards. It is the dual color option. Very easy to meet with this deck because we play both yellow and red stuff a lot. So being able to white board remove and again, mainly play a Marcus Damon for free is absolutely value. Comes out in security, absolutely great even as well. And then last but not least, our similar one, we have Sunrise Buster. You guys know how strong this card really is. Let's us play a red or yellow tamer from our hand without paying memory cost. So, you know, and then we can minus 3000 DP to one of our opponent's Digimon for every tamer we have. So you get to rack up really great for deleting something that's big and wide, essentially. So yeah, being Rise Grave on X's signature move, super powerful, really, really good card, really great for removal. That's it for the 50 card main deck. Let's talk about other like unique cards that you can play, which there's actually quite a handful of suggestions that I have differently for this deck because it's so flexible with your red and yellow choices when it comes to it. If you guys prefer a different Coromon in terms of getting more DP instead, go for this one instead. But I feel like draw power is just more important for this specific deck because you don't really need to buff up your top end that much. You're not really playing like a War Greymon or Black War Greymon type where you're swinging a lot aggressively with your level six. Like I mentioned, Marcus is actually your main beater of the deck instead and drawing pieces is always nicer, uh, which I prefer anyways. But you guys can play for this one if you want DP. And if you want to go for the yellow blade base, you can go for this Coromon here, which is from BT12. You know, whenever with its inheritable is once per turn, during your turn, when one of your yellow tamers or red tamers becomes suspended, one of your opponents each might get, to get minus 1000 DP, which can help for with some kind of control and removal. And then if you play the yellow base, you probably need a yellow Agumon instead of the red ones. And this one is a yellow dinosaur this one gives you one attacking if you have three or more yellow tamers and play drawing card overall there's not too many good options at the moment for yellow agumon in my personal opinion because i think i believe i'm not wrong this is the only other yellow dinosaur you can really play therefore i prefer the other one with the red stuff because it seems more aggressive and stronger with dp as well instead and then of course there's another geo Greymon you can play this one also bt2 but this one kind of restricts you a little bit for this particular deck because you're playing more, more mostly level three that are red rookies you can't really digivolve effectively with this guy and therefore i decided to go for the hybrids instead because the hybrids can at least digivolve on top of the tamers to give me a little bit more value if i'm also trying to go aggressive with swing but if you guys were yellow base this geo gray definitely works out nicely too and a really cool tech spice that I want to show you guys as well that you can play is this Greymon X from BT11. You can Digivolve for on top of a red that is three cost. Of course, you don't play any regular Greymons. You can if you want to, but you start diverging away a little bit, which makes it a little bit confusing, I think. You definitely want to see more Geo Greys overall instead anyways, instead of just regular Greymons. But this guy, you can Digivolve at the back, sit in a raising. It lets you get into your Rise Greymon for even less cost, which is going to be really good, and you can do really cool combos and turbo into it. I am debating and even arguing maybe somehow finding room to fit at least one of this guy in, in my current build, just because you can just turbo so nicely. But like I also mentioned, we don't play its inheritable at all because we don't play X antibody in the deck. But if I do add this guy, maybe we can play a one of X antibody. Who knows? But yeah, just a really cool tech spice that I definitely think is really nice. Another really cool one is not Shine Grey related, but Venusmon has been a lot of debate. This card seems to be pretty good in countering the meta at the moment to slow down some really strong decks at the format such as like Beelzemon for example so she definitely comes in handy if you ever want to be very defensive and sort of like stall out the game a little bit and control a little bit more because she definitely does help right there but currently I just like my level 6 lineup so that's it for her and then for another different Omnimon you could play I would definitely suggest Merciful Mode also just a really good counter against Beelzemon you can easily get into it because all your top end are yellow or red and by paying six you can delete stuff with this guy for every mega you have in the sources and whatnot and then basically you know trash your opponent's security as well but I felt like this deck itself is actually very aggressive you can actually swing for lots of checks where therefore I kind of prefer having the books Omni just to finish games but if you don't, guys don't want don't want to have that and want to have more control, definitely this merciful mode is nice. 
For other yellow tamers, you can play TK to help you search your security. Memory tamer, which is great as well, being a yellow source, absolutely fantastic, has quite a bit of synergy with the deck as well, but just not being a Marcus Damon doesn't help as much. But yeah, a one of TK is not a bad choice either. And speaking of which, another one copy of this TK Kari can help out very nicely too, just so you can gain a little bit more memory, kind of similar to Tai and Kari together, but I felt like Tai and Kari matches more just because they're double colored, fulfilling the red and yellow that you need in the deck, but also you're consistently gaining more memory with them in most cases because you take down their security, they're probably going to take down your security as well against most decks, so you're always balancing and getting a lot of value off of it. For other removal options, you can play Crimson Blaze, just a really good one, but there's a lot of really good built-in archetype removal options that we talked about already that is currently in the deck, such as Sunrise Buster and Shining Blast as well, so therefore there's not much room, but Crimson Blaze definitely works out nicely, especially we play the red base. For more searching consistency, another red staple that I can suggest right here, Red Memory Boost is absolutely fantastic, really good, just for more memory, just to find more pieces you need, and continuing in combos and your turn is always very nice, just a really good standard red staple that I have suggested. Alright, that's it for all the cards I want to showcase for this particular deck, now let's sort of teach you guys how to play and strategize and what the approach is and the really cool combos you can pull off all at the same time. Now, of course, you're always going to be hatching your egg and sort of trying to build your stack in the early stages of the game. This is the Agumon that I always like to digivolve into, and these two are the hard-playing Agumons to search for pieces and whatnot. Depending if you're going first or second, you can be very versatile with this particular combo. Um, so yeah, let's just play these to search, and then we can just digivolve here in the back. And let's just say your opponent does something, they put you back to one memory or two memory, whatever it is. This is when you want to push up, and this is when you have access to this particular new Geo Greymon. Once again, this is why it's very important that all these Agumons are dinosaurs, because you can Digivolve for two, passing your opponent to one, and on Digivolve, you get to play a Marcus Daemon. You will have searched with this Agumon. Hopefully, you find a Marcus Daemon, but we play a lot of Marcus Daemons in this deck, so we should be able to see one usually in the early stage of the game. And also, this is for searching for your Greymons and stack. So play whichever Marcus Daemon you have. If you have the Memory Tamer, go for it. If you have this one, both of them are just really, really good value. Your opponent's going to do their thing, and they pass you back to one, or this Memory Tamer with the Marcus is going to put you to three, so lots of value right there too, depending on whichever you have. And then this is when you get into your level fives. So if I know that I have this in my both of these in my hand to access it, I'm going to go for the Memory Tamer first, because if I go into this one for three, I can basically then play this one for free. So that's instant value right there, which is absolutely fantastic. Or if I had this one to begin with and I'm going for this one, you know, I would digivolve into this one for effectively just two costs because you gain a memory back. And if you start your turn at two memory, you get to retain your turn. And if you had more memory, if you had this Marcus Damon established earlier on as well, you get to pay one memory to move this guy up, for example, because you start the turn at three. You pay one to move this guy up, and then you digivolve this for three, and then you gain the memory back because you have that for two. This is the super cool combo right here. You immediately swing with Marcus Damon, and because it's suspended, you get to digivolve it into a Rise Gray, uh, into a Shine Greymon, sorry, for free. Now, all these effects are going to activate mainly the Geo Greymon if you had this Agumon as well. Because one of your yellow or red tamers are suspended, you get to minus 2k, you get a minus 2k again to something. And basically, your Marcus Damon will also gain 3,000 right here, security plus 1, which is very nice. If any times when you have your Taikari right here set up already, you can use this to minus another 2k to your opponent's security Digimon. And effectively, Marcus Damon right here is going to swing for 2 checks. Really, really good value. And Marcus Damon at the end of the turn kind of returns back to, I guess, so-called the Tamer area. But honestly, everything is in the battle area, but it's just easier to understand when you're like sort of like pushing it up, sort of with its effect but if marcus damon ever gets deleted and fret rise Greymon comes back in and puts it at the top of your security and your opponent's just gonna sit there wondering if they should chip you away or not if they don't they're not going progressing to the you know to the win condition if they are you get your marcus damon back here again for free immediately which is ultra value and then the next turn once again if your shine Greymon sticks on the board and they can't deal with it again you're going to be starting at three you get to suspend the marcus daemon as well if you attack with your shine Greymon. so let's just say you do anyways you get to draw one as well you usually attack a player extra 2k on shine gray you get to gain a memory back and then at the start of the main phase earlier as well you get to pay that mem one memory come up with marcus and swing for another two checks and usually like i said you have so much memory and you might have established a few other tamers already this is when Kazemon can just come in and hybrid for game, which is always very nice. Otherwise, 
uh, this is again one of the reasons why I like to play Omnimon right here. And the other thing I like to mention, because of this Geo Gray, we play so many of it, it comes out with security, it can be an extra check right here, or if you had a rookie in raising, you pushed out and whatnot. Now, the other idea, which is really cool with it, is let's just say your Geo Gray comes out, and let's just say whatever you have on board is like some, some of these tamers, you have the Marcus Damons, whichever you have here. More ideally, it's going to be this one. You can, again, push this one up, paying one memory because you do control Greymon, swing with this guy, and you can instantly digivolve into your Rise Greymon as well for free. Absolutely free. Pay zero cost. Very memory effective right here. And depending on whichever you play, you know, you get to gain a memory back. Ideally, it's going to be your uh, BT12 one for sure. And then it will just swing for checks. Uh, it will only swing for one check because you don't have Shine Gray here in this particular scenario, but that's totally fine. If it ever gets deleted, put it back here. And then if you want to follow up play, you can go into Shine Gray right here too and then swing and do all that. And most of the times, you won't only just have one Marcus Damon. You might have, you'd be probably be setting up multiples or one or two or being able to see two is quite often in the game as well. Now, the other combo I want to show you guys is why I like to sort of tech in the Yellow War Greymon is in this particular situation, if you Digivolve, uh, start at three and then you did evolve for three uh going down to zero with this war Greymon right here usually like i said you're gonna set up quite a bit of tamers you can easily meet the threshold of three instead so here you can easily just swing for two checks uh, at 11k hopefully it survives if it doesn't then that's unfortunate but you can go really aggressive that's what i'm trying to show you guys and then unsuspend with it take a security to your hand and then swing again for another two checks and instantly that's lots of checks done just like that which is absolutely amazing but yeah, it's very simple, very, very, very cool idea with the deck. And just rewinding it a little bit back, if you had Agumon instead, you can just say um, at the start of your turn, you start at three again, you move the Agumon up, you can just pay one to move the Marcus up here as well, swing with the Marcus, and then instantly digivolve into a Geo Gray. Although this combo is slightly suboptimal in my opinion, just because... You already have a Marcus Damon in play, so you don't get to play one for free. So instead of doing that, I will just digivolve this for two first, swing with the Marcus Damon, and then I can go into a Rise Gray right here, or into this other Rise Gray for value, for free, and then they swing for a check. And then again, same as before, you can finish it off with a Shine Gray and passing your opponent to three as well. So really versatile again with these combos, really cool stuff you can do with Marcus Damon. And I just can't wait for newer support because this deck is just gonna get insane and even, even more stronger. And yeah, I just really can't wait for it. But this deck is just super cool to play right now already too. That will wrap up for the deck profile for today. If you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please give it a like. If you have any suggestions, recommendations, or questions, be sure to share it with everyone in the comments down below. We've got lots more Digimon videos and content coming with BT12 deck profiles, so be sure to hit that subscribe button right now, turn on that notification bell to stay tuned. If you guys just can't wait and want to see early deck lists and first drafts made by me, then definitely join the Evolve Club right now as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. You guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. See you in the next video, and it's about signing out.